Excuse me, I can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear you. Um, um, I'm just saying that I hope that everybody is uh, understanding that we're all doing what we think is best for the kids. Everybody's here for the kids. And um, we all just need to be civil with each other and um, like to work things out and, you know, do things. with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second input statement session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his and her name, and um, we have a microphone at the podium. I do not think we do, but people can talk loud. So if you can stand and say your um, first and last name in the town that you live in, um, and just speak loudly, I guess. Um, and your reason for speaking. <laughs> Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Please note that statements involving certain subject matters, such as personnel, cannot be made during these public input sessions. Um, all right. Do we have, and we're gonna, um, we're just gonna run a timer just for ease and we'll give you a 20 second warning when you're at the end of approaching your three minutes. Thank you. I just hope we have Anyone have any public input? So actually, do we, even though we don't have a mic, do we still want people to come up over here just so that we have a little order to it? Yeah, um, Hi, my name is Kathy Sheedy and I'm from Berwick and I'm going to read a letter from my niece who is a senior at the Noble High School. Hello, my name is Morgan Bill and I'm a senior here at Noble. I'm writing this letter because I am in favor of wearing masks during the school day. I would like to keep our schools open as it is my final year here. I believe that we should be more strict about mask breaks as I have only gotten a mask break one time so far this entire senior year. I feel that students have been following the mask mandate very well, and only a few students have worn them below the nose. Teachers will be able to remind them to wear their mask correctly. I feel that we should continue assigned seating as they can help trace back if a student does get COVID. And only a small portion of students needs to be quarantined as opposed to all of us. I would love to stay in person as much as possible as I am involved in the theater production. I would love to not be required to wear a mask during the show, as facial expressions are a dramatic part of theater. As it has already been proven, masks work and are effective. I am an individual who tends to have a cold over the winter for a long period of time, and I did not get any form of sickness last year when I was wearing masks everywhere I went. When I, I only got that cold when I was fully vaccinated and started taking off my mask again and was allowed in public places. Keeping germs contained during the school day will give us a higher chance of staying in person and having as much as a normal year as possible. I would love to have a real graduation. I have spoken to various other students in my classes in order to gain a better understanding 
of what other students are saying about the mask situation. I have heard the majority speak about how masks are not a big deal and how it is the safest way to ensure that we can speak about <clears throat> it is the safest way to ensure we can stay in person as opposed to online learning. Personally, I feel that many of us struggled while learning remotely and has certainly put a toll on the mental health of many. Some students have stated how they are willing to wear a mask even though they don't want to. They claim that they do not mind getting COVID and be because they are vaccinated and they do not feel that they want to wear a mask, but they will do so if the school requires it. When masks were first made optional on the first day of school, I was shocked to see how many people did not wear them. I was hoping people would at least put them on in the hallways in more crowded places. I wondered how many of them were unvaccinated and how uncomfortable others were because of this. I certainly was. I feel as if students should be able to take off their masks if they're in a small group and is constantly together, as long as they are staying sanitized and vaccinated. Overall, I'm hoping that I can continue to get my education in person and have a fall musical in person. This can only happen if students and teachers continue to stay safe by wearing masks. And I just want to re remind you that that was a student at the Noble High School that had that day. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Matthew Leggett. I'm 11 in resident. I have a kid in sixth grade and ninth grade. My son also noticed that when kids came to school on the first day, when masks weren't mandated, like was spoken before, nobody really wore them. None of his friends want to wear them. Nobody in the school that he spoke to wants to wear them. None of them are concerned. <clears throat> we talked about facts. I know a lot of facts, like was brought up before, can be changed and manipulated. But what can't be, is the number of students that get infected. It gets counted. We know how many kids get infected in the school. If you go to dhstexas.gov, Texas doesn't require masks in school. In fact, the governor is suing any town that wants to institute a mask mandate. So they're a great example to look to to see, do masks work? So they just reported on September 5th, their student body in Texas is 5,340,108. Of that, 13,222 were infected. That's an infection rate of 2.47%. We can compare that to what the national average is. The national average is currently, as of 914, was 9.12%. So much higher than that of Texas school with no masks. What about Maine? Maine is at 5.17% as of 914. So our state is at a higher infection rate than those in school that don't even have a mask on. Other countries around the world notice that masks don't work. Places like Scotland, England, Wales, Ireland, UK, Britain, all have de determined that masks in schools do not work and is a detriment to our children. In June, the Delta variant went surging in Britain, so they had a high infection rate, but still saw that the ones in school because they were in school during that time, had a very low infection rate. Showing once again, without masks, even with the Delta variant surging, kids were not getting sick in school. I don't know, I don't have the stats in front of me as to why kids don't get sick like adults do. I don't know, I'm not a scientist. I can only read these numbers and tell you they don't. Why do we know they don't? Because the numbers don't lie. How many kids got sick? How many kids are in the school? It's not hard math. I believe a gentleman in here has stats from our school. We have masks on. I think we're at 3%. We're higher than that of Texas with no masks. I couldn't get Georgia's and Florida's as I, don't, I couldn't find any reporting specific to school, but they don't have masks either in school. Um, but Texas, it's really easy to find. Texas.gov. Please go to their website. You can see for yourself. That way it's not just my word. Um, I also want to speak about the mask breaks. You're at three minutes. Okay. I didn't get 20 seconds. Can I do just the mask I break? Just thing? Oh, sorry. I agree with your mask break thingy. They're not getting it on school. Can I just ask for a point of information why the board has uh, stated in their uh, public comment uh, policy on the uh, website that public participation is five minutes, not three minutes? 
It says it was updated in February 2020, and that's the one that's posted that was adopted in 1991 that's advertised. We'll, we'll check into that, but that's... But that's what's posted. We'll check, we'll check into that. But that's what you have advertised. We will check into that. Have a seat. A couple minutes. Yes, please. Uh, I'm a uh, North Fern resident. And um, with all. So, to, yesterday, the American Academy of Pediatrics issued a statement saying that they were greatly concerned with the spike in coronavirus amongst children under 12 and a spike in deaths of children under 12. And that they blamed it mostly on anti-mask mandates. Um, the Scientific American today uh, came out and with an article which cited several um, studies which all said masks are effective and they didn't have enough room to go over all of them in a magazine format. Um, in North Carolina, they looked at a million school children in their system and found that with their mask mandate, the infection rates were lower in the school than in the surrounding community. This notion that masks don't work, you know, and I know for a fact Texas.gov does not collect the information from all of their schools. It's, it's incomplete data. So this notion that masks don't work is simply contrary to all the science. Um, and today in Idaho, they announced that doctors are having to make a choice between who lives and who dies because their ICUs are filled. And it's because people are not wearing masks, children. are not getting vaccinated. We need the school board, you guys did the right thing in mandating masks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm Rick Pelletier, I'm from London. Uh, I have a 13 year old in eighth grade. Uh, I wanted to say, I wanted to apologize for the Lebanon people. I kind of called you guys out last time and you voted for uh, parent choice. And my bad, I, I, that was my first time ever. So my bad, thank you for voting for parents. Uh, the rest of you, shame on you. Um, uh, I see that we're getting plenty of COVID emails still and you guys are saying masks work. Why are we still getting COVID if masks work? I don't understand the understanding behind it. Uh, four from the high school, two different days in a row, uh, and the other schools too. I mean, you guys, you guys think these masks work, but 20 minutes, maybe 20 minutes into it, these things are junk. Um, I've also seen videos and studies that people vaping, they vape through the mask and it comes right to them. Vape, vape, vape vapor is more thicker than the virus itself and it just bellows out every single different mask that they tried. It just bellows out. So why is that? Oh yeah, that's right. Bull. Uh, I also wanted to say I sat down with the assistant and the uh, the uh, superintendent uh, and asked questions, and they said they were getting funding for masking the children as well. I was wondering why if there's not a state emergency mask mandate and they're leaving it up to the the, the towns or whatever, the committees to, to vote, why are we uh, masking our children? Uh, it, I was gonna ask that if in good faith, if you're saying it's for the health of our children, how about you guys don't take the funding from the government and show good faith towards the, the parents that this isn't for the money, it's for the children. I'd like to see that happen. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to know, uh, 
except for maybe one or two members of the board, how many of you have children in the school system? You guys are pretty old. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where, where your children are, where you're basing your opinions on children when you have zero children in the school system. That's all I, I, I have a right to speak. So you can get as angry as you want. If you want to yell at me later, fine. Uh, also, I'd like to say that uh, Matt and some other speakers that are going to come up here are going to give you massive amounts of data. I'd like that you guys listen to them because this data is real. And I'd like to ask you where the data is for why we're having to mass coming into here. There's no school in session, nothing, no kids, no nothing. So why are our rights being taken away from us from coming in here now? You know, so you're taking it out on parents as well. I mean, I'm not understanding this. And by the way, a vaccine is to 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 make an immunity, uh, uh, immunity to a virus, and this vaccine is doesn't give that to you. You get sick anyway, so it's not a vaccine. It's all a hoax. You shake your head all you want. You guys just... but thank you. Appreciate it. Let me start by saying that I am not misinformed. I am pro parent choice for masks. I am for freedom of choice for the best medical decision for each individual. I am not opposed to masks if you want to wear them. I am not against doing my part to help keep others safe if it's within my ability. I am against mandating masks because the efficacy of them is basically zero, along with the fact that my daughter has not once had a mask break in any of her classes since the mandate was put in place. I was going to stand up here and read another statement I had composed filled with information, facts, reputable sources about masks and how they don't work, how the gaps in the sides or in the nose area render the mask useless. I wanted to present the idea of an industrial hygienist who is a professional in the field of field associated with exposure, PPE, and warning, warnings. In essence, they work to help control hazards such as COVID virus. I wanted to point out many of the other adverse effects that happen to our children of all ages who, who are made to wear masks all day long, such as an increase in mental health claims, anxiety, tics, OCD, self-harm, and overdoses, not to mention a moist mask is a breeding ground for bacteria and fungi. Lastly, I was going to ask the school board if you had investigated better solutions. What portion of the COVID relief money was used for alternative solutions? The best way to keep everyone safe is by dilution and or destruction of the virus. I know windows are open for dilution purposes, what else have you done besides mandate masks to make the school safer? Have you increased the ventilation of the school by setting the dampers to maximum openings? Have you investigated needle point ionized technology that you add to the HVAC intake against to kill viruses, mold, and bacteria? Have you looked into ionized hydrogen peroxide systems, conduct air purifier to disinfect air particles throughout the entire building? Excuse me. Then I realized three minutes is not nearly enough time for me to present a well-articulated argument that most would give pause to and really listen to what I was saying. I figured many of you already turned me out and placed me in the misinformed category. So I will close again by stating I am pro-parent choice for masks in all schools. Hi, my name is Craig. I'm a Lebanon resident. I have a uh, senior in high school. She's sitting over there. Um, and I have a four-year-old who's getting ready to go into school. I'm a, an RN. And um, I just uh, like to say that we have... It seems like most people come up here when they're really upset about something. And nobody ever comes up and says, hey, you guys are just doing a great job. And so that's what I want to come up here and say. You guys are just doing a great job. And I feel like not enough people come up here and just like say, hey, good job. It's always something bad. 
Uh, as an RN, I am only allowed to use evidence-based practice at work, and we've got a hundred years worth of evidence that masks work. They just work. It's been a hundred years worth of study, and uh, we know they work. Um, you know, the uh, we hear all kinds of stuff about you know bacteria build up in the mask and everything. I wear a mask all day. I was on whole days, 12-hour shifts, never a problem. And uh, I've never seen or ever heard of another nurse that has an issue with it either. That's what we do. Um, and uh, I mean, that's really all I had to say is just thank you guys for doing a great job. So thank you very much. from Birth Maine. Um, first of all, the mask on the box, it clearly states it doesn't spread, prevent the spread of viruses. It says it right on the box. I wrote a six page letter last meeting, no one read it. Had statistics, had everything. But what was most important is what my kids had to say that I wrote. Sorry, I'm not a good speaker. <laughs> um, I asked them, were they able to pay attention in class with masks? They said no. I asked them, how did it affect you? Easily tired, easily annoyed, because they had to keep fidgeting with it. It's uncomfortable. My daughter wears glasses and was constantly fogging up. I asked her if she learned anything. No. Nothing I could have learned on my own because I couldn't pay attention. I'm homeschooling my kids because I have a kindergartner. He's not going to learn anything from seeing no verbal cues. How is he going to pronounce letters? A. Ah. How is he going to see a face? Like he said, there's cases each week from you guys opening back up. The masks do not work. I haven't worn a mask. Am I saying the COVID is not real? Yes, it is. My family members have gotten it. Not my direct family. My mom, my dad, my in-laws, my great-grandmother. You know, they, they all had it. I know it's real, but these masks don't work. I was with them. My whole family was with them. And what it's actually about is you're not our kids' doctors. You're not our kids' parents. And if you did care about them like we did, you would care how they felt. And if they felt like they were getting a real education. Because mine did not. And they deserve free education just like everyone else and to not have an option and punish them because they're not Comfortable wearing a mask and feel they don't learn is not right. That's all I guess. <laughs> High School. I take two foreign language classes, Spanish 5 and Russian 2. There are times when it is indeed difficult to hear. When this happens, all we need to do is ask our teachers to speak up and we are able to repeat exactly what they are saying. I believe that we should be wearing masks in school. Not because it protects ourselves, but because it protects the people around us. I hear a lot of people saying that vaccines are ineffective and that is not completely true. Vaccines decrease your risk of contracting the virus. It is still possible to get COVID-19 with the vaccine. They also decrease your risk of spreading the COVID virus to people around you if you have the vaccine. This means that both wearing a mask and having the vaccine 
makes us a U.S. significantly less likely to spread the virus in our own school. I have had no issues with my learning, except when we were on remote. I do not want our school to have to go remote again, and I would rather have everybody be in school safe. Thank you. Amanda Turner from North Berwick. I'm, I just wanted to come up here and let you know things that are going on in the school are not okay. Parents have the right for their kids, not the superintendent, not the state. I pay taxes. I have a right to say what I want for my kids. When my son tells me that he's pulled out of class because he pulled his mask down to breathe, he got sent to the superintendent's office, excuse me, the um, dean's office, and the dean told him that if his name came across his desk again, or if he saw him without his mask on, he was going to be suspended. Tell me how that's right. My decision, not yours. I'm going to keep my mask on out of respect for others. Um, <laughs> I, first of all, want to say that I have a daughter who is in first grade at the high school. She started kindergarten last year when the pandemic began. She needed to be masked in person, but at that, at that situation, I felt it's so important for kindergartners and first graders to be in person because they're going to learn things at, at school with their teachers in, in these educational, you know, rooms and, and situations that they're not going to listen to their parents at home. It was a social everything. It's needed. Kindergartners and first graders need that interaction. I have a question and I'll give three seconds. I don't, I, this is my first time ever attending a board meeting. Like I said, I have my first daughter in first grade. So if you guys can't answer, I'm genuinely curious who determines these decisions of math. Is it, if you guys go by the CDC, can somebody answer who determines the, what, what we do in school? Can anybody answer that? <laughs> Is it you guys ultimately? Typically during, typically during public input, we're just hearing you. Um, but who ultimately but I think makes if you want choice. to follow up with an email, we can get you that. Do you guys follow the <laughs> CDC? <laughs> 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 no, I'm just curious. There must be a protocol that you guys follow. They do. Do you guys follow CDC rules? Because I got those right here. I, I'm checking your answer. It's okay. I appreciate you guys all for being here. I'm genuinely I've never been to a board meeting and I'm just, I'm curious. Can I ask you what your name is? My name is Janelle Kucher and my daughter's Thank name is Daisy Kucher. I'm sorry. You. My name is Janelle Kucher. I'm from Berwick. My daughter's name is Daisy Kucher and she's in first grade. And that's I apologize for that. So that's okay. You guys are obviously under a lot of pressure, but just ultimately, whether you hear our remarks and then you also try to follow CDC, which I understand, who make? I'm curious, who makes the ultimate decision? Is it superintendent? The board makes the decision. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I did not know that. My daughter went to first kindergarten in Miss Childress' class at the school and she had a great year under the circumstances of having to wear a mask. It was so good for her. We had to go, we got COVID in December of 2020 and we had to be home and it was really rough for all of us. It's rough for any parent. Kids at a young age need to be in the classroom. They're going to learn things that they're not going to sit down and listen to their parents about. That's just common sense. My daughter now is in first grade. And she's done so well. She's doing amazing. She actually did the breeding program, which is the summer school at the Hussey School. The bus came and picked her up for the first time. I didn't have her on the bus because of COVID. You know, you're already worried about enough. Bus, you worry about more. But so the bus came and picked her up, and she did not have to wear a mask. Three minutes. Oh, only three minutes. Yeah. Nobody told me that. I remember that. 
I wasn't going to be getting it. Yeah. Yeah. My little thing is, is that, um, so my daughter's doing really well, and I understand you guys are doing what you have to do, and you're making the best choices for everybody, and you're trying to do what's best for everybody. I understand that. But today, I got a virtual view of, um, we never had an open house. I, I've never met my daughter's teacher. We had a, a, a virtual online, and I saw my daughter, and she was wearing masks, and it broke my heart. And I understand, and I respect everyone who needs to wear a mask, okay? I respect that some people have autoimmune or whatever. I understand that. I study microbiology. I understand that. But just, I want you to understand also that this is affecting people. Also, kids. We do, we do have to wrap it up. Also, my other concern is that kids that are getting pulled from sports because they're close contact, but still getting forced to go to school. That seems like a punishment to me. I think that you should. Have. If you're going to pull them from sports, you should also pull them from sports. Thank you for listening to me, everybody. Good evening. Mike Barker from North Berwick. First of all, I'd like to just reiterate the fact that your stated public input policy says five minutes. It doesn't say that you won't answer questions. And it also just says that you won't debate. So, I did find what yeah. you're talking about. And it seems that it's a clerical issue that we will have yeah. to address. Okay. And that's, that's, what policy or yeah. that's what That's what's the all three, but I will find one you have. Okay. So, don't have this count me. I would also appreciate the attention of the board because there are a couple of board members that are just scrolling through whatever on their computers mm -hmm. while everybody is talking. I'm listening. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Would you allow the kids to do that? Mm -hmm. I said the last time too, you're not going to make everybody happy. The board didn't know statistics, whether or not the board knows statistics or not now. I get where the mask mandate is coming from and where the policies come from. You guys aren't even adhering to it yourself. You're within three to six feet <laughs> sitting in the room. So if one of you has COVID, then you're a close contact. So you guys can't even lead from the front in that respect either. There's also guidelines out there on how to wear a mask, how to put a mask on, how to take a mask off. Is that being enforced? Is hand washing prior to putting a mask on being enforced? Is hand washing after taking a mask off being enforced? Mm -hmm. Have the kids been taught how to store the mess? That's, what's, that's what the CDC is putting out, and that's the stuff that we're following. I get where it's coming from from the DOE. The Deputy Commissioner of the Department of Education agreed with me on the phone that it makes no sense. What they're getting from the federal government and the main CDC in the exceptions and stuff like that are very cumbersome. Why do we have to quarantine for some things and not quarantine for other things? Has anybody from the board looked at that, or the superintendent, or anybody, and said, this doesn't make sense? Actually, I do know that one person did because I had a conversation with the assistant superintendent and asked the state, the state nurse. But where is the board getting together? You say you want to make the best possible ways to keep school open and for the kids. But what pushback has, has there been? Sometimes the tough questions need to be asked, and that's your job. Have those questions been asked by you guys? Have they? I had to do a FOIA request, and bless her heart, Amy Creighton, the nurse, was able to get the data. You guys all have it now because I asked for it, of how many positive cases that we've had. There needs to be some solutions if we're going to live in this world, too. I witnessed uh, high school dismissal the other day. So the mask does nothing if we're only going to put it on in school, in the classroom, and then just let everybody run amok afterwards. I'm not saying we have to mandate masks at all times or whatever, and I get it that we're staff constrained and things like that. But when they pile out of the school and they're hugging each other and kissing each other and standing and waiting for the bus, 
Something needs to be done. We need to be better at it. And you guys need to set the example. And you're not right now. You're not by scrolling on your computer when you're looking and, and supposed to be listening to people and typing. And you're not by the way that you're even seated here today. And you have students that are here. So you can't enforce those rules upon them if you're not going to do it to yourselves. I look forward to working with people to make it better. I understand where it's coming from. But the board right now is pretty inept to what needs to happen and did not get out in front of it. two children, grade one and three. Um, I have definitely noticed that they are more irritable and get frustrated easily. Um, they are not the happy kids that they were. Besides that, I just want to bring up the point that COVID is here and it will not go away. So how long are we going to keep this up for? How long are we going to wear the masks? It is not ever going to go away. We cannot prevent it. We cannot prevent it with the vaccine. We cannot prevent it with masks. It is here. It is going to spread. So I believe that parents should have a choice if they want to make their kid wear a mask and get sick or not wear a mask and get sick. That should be the parent's choice, not strangers' choices. If you want your kid to go to school and wear a mask, go for it. Tell your kid to do it. If you want your kid to go to school and not wear a mask, that's your option also. Um, I don't believe we should treat this as a pandemic anymore because we are in an endemic. It is not going anywhere. And we need to start coming up with solutions to the treatments, not prevention. We cannot prevent it. It is here. We need to work on treatments. That is all. Hi, my name is Jessica Brooks, and I am from Lebanon. I have four children in this district, um, three of which are in high school, one in elementary. Um, first of all, I have to say that my daughter, Destiny, is in 10th grade. She only went to school one day. That was when we had a choice to wear a mask. She has mental issues and medical issues that that she cannot wear a mask. And I've already told you guys that before this. She has um, anxiety and asthma. Right now, she is not going to any, she's not in school. They won't let her come because she can't wear a mask. They are not allowing breathing treatments because um, she is, could spread COVID. Um, she is not allowed any virtual or anything until the doctors and the school get in touch with each other, which I'm fighting for every day calling. Um, she is being denied medical attention, her education. This is, she's 10th grader. She is being denied everything. And this is not fair. Not every, everybody thinks that everyone can wear a mask. It is not true. Everyone cannot wear a mask. It is not that easy. Mental issues is real. And we actually have a bunch of this in the school. Um, to me, uh, I'll get on with that later, but my other son is in high school, gets no mask breaks. He says every time he pulls his mask down, he gets in trouble, like he's in prison or something like that. Um, he gets in trouble by students, teachers, janitors, what do they have to do with enforcing this? This is ridiculous. He needs to breathe, he needs to breathe. Um, also, the fourth and fifth grade at the elementary, um, they're having to do remote learning for Tuesday because the election is taking place. 
But yeah, we couldn't go to open house to see our children's teachers and our school, their school. How is this fair? How is this fair to the parents when there, there's going to be everybody in the community going to my children's school, but I can't go to meet with the teacher, meet the student, or whatever? This is not fair. Also, um, bullying. I feel like, honestly, my family is being bullied because... 20 seconds. Um, I'm not from here, I'm from the South, and we have different views and morals, I guess, apparently, from you guys. Um, and I also, I have a question for the board, if y'all would get back to me. Uh, where does it state in the school uh, rules that the Confederate flag is not allowed on school premises? I want to know that. This is my student's drawing that was not allowed on the bulletin board. She's 10 years old. Um, the bulletin board says diversity. Does everyone know what that means? It means differences, uniqueness. She's only 10 years old. That was not allowed on the, how does that make a 10 year old feel that her artwork could not be on the bulletin board? I need uh, answers about the Confederate flag that. Um, and, uh, they could still go, but um, we've heard quite a bit tonight. Um, so we'd like to kind of wrap this up and maybe have one or two more speakers. We'd like that. Bring us home strong, please. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, well, first of all, do you guys know 19 year old, years ago that the influenza pandemic happened? I bet you guys don't know because you guys are teaching history right here. Confederate flag, Civil War, all that stuff. Why isn't that being brought up? Nazis. That happened. Mm -hmm. My God, but it happened. I'm Lindsay Quigley. I am uh, the mother of Lou Bell Barone, who is, yes, in elementary, and I am an alumni here. So, <laughs> I'm just really baffled that I'm looking at the teachers and the people in this room that I grew up with, and the fact that you guys are trying to take my parents' rights away. I should try very hard to get pregnant. Let me tell you, I have two miracles. And with those miracles, I have the responsibility to be teaching my morals. A lot of you remember when my mom died. This school helped me out. This school backed me up. This school made sure I had some food. They made sure I had a couch to lay on under wraps. But you guys are just taking everything away from me right now, and it's really burning a hole in my heart. And the educational part on my mask, let me tell you something. Those two blue masks, this, who's a nurse in here? Who's a nurse? Who's medical? What are the, what's the time limit on those? Do you know? Mm -hmm. Two hours, okay? And that's the barrier breaks. I worked in the ER for 10 plus years. And we have to room and take those masks and drop them away. They're not good. But you guys are having them wear them all day. And you know what? Last thing, I'm just going to wrap it right up because 23 positive cases as far as I was aware of today. Six at Noble High, five positive at Noble Middle. Five positive at Hussey, and one Mary, is it Mary Heard? Four positive at Noble Athletics, and two North Berwick Elementary. How good are these masks working out for you there? Okay, um, but another thing is, Miss Moore, who's Mrs. Moore? Her to tell a 14, 15 year old girl she has to take a vaccination, you know what the vaccination is doing? Uh, there has been seizure cases, stroke cases, uh, uh, paralyzation, uh, infertilization. Do you know what psychology you're going to do to that kid? Give her PTSD, all this stuff. You're going to give her trauma because she could have had babies, but you guys told her to take a vaccine. Miss Moore, in fact, told her to take a vaccine. I am. Oh, I'm supposed to do that now. How's it going? My name is Kyle Chandler from North Brewer. 
Mask, no mask, doesn't matter. One wear it, wear it. You don't, you don't. Why are the kids being pushed aside or discriminated against whether they vaccinate or cut that? It's happening every day. I got a 13 year old, I got an 8 year old. Uh, my 13 year old is being told he can go to school, but he can't play football. That kid goes to school so he can play football. That kid goes to school so he can wrestle. Now he's being told, not given facts to make a decision or a choice. Vaccinate, you can play. Hmm. Where do you think his decision is? Comes home and says, hey, Dad, I want to get vaccinated. Why? What's your reason? And I, and I could care less. In our house, you want to be vaccinated? Vaccinate. You don't? Don't. Why is it? These kids are exposed. They're exposed whether they're at school, they're exposed whether they're at Walmart. So if they have a close contact at school, you don't think that they haven't had a close contact outside of school? I've worked from the time it started to the time it's to now. We're in and out of people's vehicles every day. We do what we need to do, or we do what we feel as though, as far as bombing and, and, and all of that when this whole thing started. Or are you getting in people? But there's close contacts, whether it's me coming home to him, him having a close contact at school. If they're not showing any symptoms or any issues or any problems, why are they not being able to play? If masks weren't so good at school, he's out of contact, come to school, wear a mask, why can't he go to football practice, wear a mask? What's the difference? It's with the same kids. Same group. He's hanging out with them after school. Hanging out with them in school. What's the difference if they're at football? This choice is being made for them. They're not getting to make it for themselves. A lot of these kids are getting to the ages and to the points now in their life where they need to start learning to make some of these choices, make some of these decisions, and, and learn on their own. That's all I got. I didn't recognize you with your mask. I didn't recognize you with your mask. Miranda Mulligan of Harwood Kid. Um, I'm not coming up here with a bunch of facts. I'm coming up here just as a mother of uh, kids that are struggling. They've been struggling for nearly two years. Um, and I think we were hoping and praying that this year would look different, as so many of you must have done. Um, my son came home the first day from school when he didn't have to wear a mask. Um, and he came in the house and he said, Mom, um, today was so good. We connected, we talked, we saw each other smiling, we interacted, we got to talk with our friends and our teachers, and it felt so good for him. He was excited about school and learning again. And isn't that what we want for our children? Like, I mean, my kids have always wanted those things. Um, you guys mandated the mask. The next day, I'm not making this up, that same kid, he comes in, and he says, school sucked. School sucked. I don't want to go. There's no reason to even feel happy about going. There's, like, he felt nothing from coming here. That is not what we want for our kids. We want our kids to be excited to learn. We want them to feel connected to teachers, to their friends, to build a community. We want all of that. Um, that brings me now to yesterday. I've been dealing with that for the last, you know, couple weeks. Yesterday, we get informed that one of my sons, um, who's on the JV football team, was currently put on a 10-day quarantine because of being in close contact, along with 20-plus JV football players, all on a quarantine. Um, and he walks in the house, we tell him, he starts crying. Mom, I just want a normal life again. I want a normal life. Like, what are we doing to our kids? I mean, this is 
This is a 15 year old boy. Do you think he's crying often? No. That, that's not okay that we're doing this to these kids. Um, he says, I just, I hate my life. No, this kid has no reason to hate his life. I realize that. But the reality is, is as a 15-year-old, that is what he is feeling. He wants to have the normal things that he's always had in his life. Um, he, he says, I just want to go back to school. I want to go back to sports. So this brings up some questions in my mind. You know, I've been dealing with this so much that I'm like, my mind is going every minute. And one of the things is, there have been things that... Like it's been three minutes already? No, I said you have about 20 seconds. Okay. There are things that certainly don't make any sense. If you're a close contact at school, you can return to school. If it's on the football field or on the bus or through a sport, you have to quarantine from everything. None of this adds up. I do believe it's your job to ask the questions on a state level. You have been put in this role to advocate for our kids. That is what you've been elected here to do. We're all here because we don't believe that you guys are doing that anymore. Also, I don't see any excitement in that. We should, every single person here, that's what we should be wanting. So whatever it takes to get that back, um, you should want that. Uh, yeah, how about kids? <laughs> Oh, come on, guys. That's kids. No, no, no. Um, so I am Oriana Odian, and I go to uh, from Lebanon, and I go to Noble Middle School. I'm in sixth grade, and I've been told multiple times how I can and cannot drink water, how I have to pull my mask up like this instead of pulling it down to drink water, and I just don't think that's right because I shouldn't be able to be. I, I just I think I should be able to drink water how I should be able to because and I come from running up the stairs from getting stuff out of my walker and I'm drinking water and the science teacher goes you have to put your mask up and drink water from this and I go I'm drinking water I just came from downstairs I'm on the bottom floor and I had to go all the way up to the second floor uh, two flights of stairs, and um, I'm like out of breath because I have to go up two flights of stairs with a mask on and running because I'm late for class because I couldn't get my lock open. And I just don't think that I should be told how I can and cannot drink water and just stuff like that. And I just don't think that's right, and I think that that should be changed. That's my name is Jasmine Rowan from Lebanon, and I come to Noble High School. I am in 10th grade. I have just dropped out of school because of school. You guys have pushed me to the breaking point from last year when we had to be home all day. You guys forget about the kids who have depression and anxiety already. I suffer from depression. And then you guys quarantined every single kid to no longer be able to see a single person. And they had to be on a screen. And then when it was to one day a week, you know what they were doing to the kids who could not make it to school? They were putting this on those little things up there in the corner of the classroom. I was on that screen. I would raise my hand to ask questions, wouldn't get my questions answered because they were not seeing our faces. Uh, we were up on the screen up there. What is that? Where is my education? What am I learning from that? Then on top of that, if we couldn't see the board, we couldn't tell them anything. So we were no longer able to see the board sometimes for days at a time. Then now we're coming back. First day of school, I remember coming to school, I was so happy because I dropped out halfway last year. And I was like, okay, they're not band-aiding masks, I'm going to try it again. So I came back, and I tried it, went great first day of school. So everyone smiled, so everyone's faces, so much, I could hear my teachers talk. Then it was the next day, done. I didn't even go to school the second day. I didn't come to school. I said, nope. I told my mom, no, I'm not going to school. You guys put the mask back on, I can't hear my teachers. Then, because of my last name, I'm put in the back of the classroom, because now there's a seating chart. 
which is ridiculous because we are meeting new friends, so we can't even talk to new people to make friends because we are how seven feet away. We don't have breaks. They, I think they stop at like fifth grade for breaks. No, none of the classes above that get breaks. We have no breaks at all for us. At all. What is that doing for us? And then we have warnings if we want to drink or breathe. Breathe. We have warnings of how many times we can breathe. And then we're suspended. So at that point, it's not about our education. It's about the power of who can wear a mask and who can't. And that's all. Because I wish that some other people on this side of the room might get a chance to talk. Well, they're not. Um, <laughs> and I, I would like to thank you all for doing the hard job. I'm sad to be here. I was sad last week because wearing masks isn't about me, it's about protecting somebody else. And that is inevitably getting lost in this whole conversation. I'm vaccinated. I wear a mask not to protect me, but so I protect somebody else. I'm also frustrated that I'm hearing people use as a defense that students are in here wearing masks, but then they go home and they do all these other things that expose them. That's a parent's choice. That's not happening in my family. I bring my son home and he says, protected at home. We wear masks everywhere we go. That's your choice. That's your choice. That's your choice. That's your choice. It's, yes, true. it's my choice to want to protect the other students in the school. And I hope it continues to be the choice of the board to do that as well. I also want to say, I heard that there is a call, which I have now heard voice, that Confederate flags be allowed in the classroom. That's offensive to me. Well, your gay flag is offensive. Oh, I hope the board doesn't take that up, but if there's going to be a conversation about that, I'd like to know so that my black son and his friends can have a voice in that process since I don't need to say like Yeah, if if you really want to um give more input, we can have another public input session at the end of the meeting. If you want to stay for the rest of the meeting, why is it going to be so freaking helpful? I'm going to take a five minute break just to let people. Last break. Oh, we did that. Got it. We got mask for time. Let's go. Somebody just saw the voice. They're going to take your faces. They're not listening to anything. Yeah, that was a great, great job. <laughs> Yeah, okay. my son is six years old. They took a mask and punished him by me because his nose was shallow. It's ridiculous. Yes, and uh, if you are at the N95, it's a whole way about spreading that. And you also need to do the oxygen test. The oxygen test, that's 1% of oxygen. Yeah. 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 So we can talk about it. It just is just is just one of one people. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. He's from that school. Yeah. 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 Yeah
million of dollars for what? And you want to show our dad? You see, I want to check out that. It's going to happen now that one American flags are flags on another state. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. Oh, yeah, just that? We're picking the flags up. So, my son, they have, what's his name? I don't care what the gay flag is, and gender flag, and you ought to put a straight flag and a white flag, and you put them all up. I thought we were talking about Holly, right? So, everyone should put them all up or take them all up. That's right. Either all up or all down. That's it. Yep. We have the American flag. Don't worry, because you live in America. Put any else up. Yeah. And you can't use the argument that something makes you feel uncomfortable. The mask makes you feel uncomfortable. No mask makes you feel uncomfortable. Yeah. But a mask makes, a mask makes me feel uncomfortable. Right. Then you don't have an argument. It's a slippery slope. It is. But you can also make the argument that you always say, not my body, my choice. Hello? Oh, yeah. I haven't heard that yet. Like, so, no, did you not vaccinate you? That's We need to get people called. We need to get different people It's not going to change until we get back not Thank <laughs> you. 
And this is the revenue categories. It talks about our expenses. Um, currently, we're about 17% through the year, which is about what we've actually spent with the remaining balance funding wise of 83%. So we're still we're right where we're supposed to be. We want to take a peek at the different categories. Um, and give you an example, so for under expenses, regular instruction, it says that we have, um, that we only got 10% remaining, but that's because we encumber all of our funds um, for the whole entire year. So 90% have been encumbered because we pay our, you know, we set out our teacher salaries, etc. Just an example. Do you think you're looking um, at all for us? Question about financial something. And if you take it home and you think you see something that you're like, oh, well, I'll shoot you an email and she will answer any other questions. Okay. Any other questions? Um, next item, educational programming. So for tonight, we have educational programming. We're building administrators in, just to give a summary of how the beginning of the school year has gone. We'll start at the elementary and work up. If you could just say your name, please. Thank you. Sure. Uh, I'm Michelle Kenton. I'm a principal of the Middle School in Rome. Um, as a K-5 team, we are really happy to have all of our students, staff, and administrators back in our homeschool building. Um, last year was an epic adventure and uh, really happy to be home. This summer, for the second year in a row, a huge number of our teachers district-wide packed up their classrooms and were moved by our amazing custodial staff. Teachers then spent countless hours creating thoughtful, engaging learning spaces that our students were excited to share at our virtual open house tonight. I am Patty Billy, the principal in Lebanon. Our arrival and dismissal routines continue to improve each day. Hey, my kid has helped streamline dismissal, and we appreciate the support we've received from parents in using the app. Our entire transportation department has worked tirelessly with each school to problem solve the start of school glitches. During this month, all of our K-5 students will participate in a bus safety presentation from our dedicated drivers. We're all working together to ensure that students have a safe trip to and from the school. Welcome to all the principal of the Hundy School. Good evening, everyone. Um, so our students and staff have also been working on building stamina, both physically and academically. This is a big reminder to our staff that this is our first five-day, full-day academic programming since March 2020. So we're all working to build that stamina up and continue to keep hitting all those standards. So it's our first goal, so we're working towards that. We're trying to continue. We are teachers are master food planning activities to make things engaging and keep kids going, try to do things inside and outside, all while making sure we're maximizing growth and safety. Um, Mike Weiss, I'm the principal of North Burke Elementary School, and just once again, I'd really like to shout out to our custodial staff. They just work a ton over the summer, they're still working in short staff, um, and our schools are, schools are clean and ready to open because they're just putting that time in. So, I'm to shout out to them. Uh, just to recap what everyone said, but if you walk through the schools right now, the hallways, the kids are buzzing, there's laughter, there's a ton of joy at school. Uh, we really appreciate the, the board support and also the community support uh, ongoing throughout what we've been going through. Um, so thank you all very much, and, and things are going uh, really well in the K-5 land, so thank you for that. Next item, Mr. Kelly. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, Mike Roberts, principal at Noble Middle School. Quick top 10 here for comments. What I've seen at the middle school. Inside, engage the students with masks on with a variety of questions and a variety of opinions. <laughs> Outside, students smiling and playing together without their masks. Also with a variety of opinions and a variety of questions. 
positive routines and relationships being established, reminders and redirects uh, from all of us um, as needed. Students now know their bus number, which is nice. Uh, families have been great with our parking lot pickup and drop offs. We've been averaging about 100 to 170 vehicles in the morning and the afternoon. And we're getting to that. That's the morning, A plus. Afternoon, you tell me C plus. We'll say, go we'll get on it. And the messenger, I think the families that are not hanging up on me, so I appreciate the messenger that are going out. And the last four things students working hard, staff working hard, positive intentions, and we're all tired. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, AUA support for Global High School. Um, just a few updates to share with folks. So, uh, I think echoing what everyone said, very glad to be back. I mean, we're going back five days per week. It's good. We are as big as Global High School has been in a long time. I didn't have a chance to look today, but we were at 1,266 students um, on great day through 12 as of yesterday. So, that is up pretty significantly from where we've been in the recent, in the recent past. Um, students are appreciative, and I would add they were extra appreciative for our late start Wednesday. Even though students were coming through the door, you know, close to 9.30 in the morning, they were still driving. Like, this is hard, getting up and going five days a week. As many of you know, our grade 10, 11th, and 12th graders were one day a week last year. So building that stamina back, like, the Wednesday is like a perfect time to sort of get through those two days, then you go to sleep in, then we get through two more days. We've really kind of been talking with our students about that, and it's really needed. Our staff is doing a great job helping students to re-engage. It was hard. You know, being online was really, really hard for kids. So helping them to get back into that routine, establishing those relationships. Our folks have done a really, really good job with those relationships. So apart from me, I'm out front every day, every morning, greeting students as they're coming in. Um, it's great to see them interacting with each other. That's something we really didn't have, even on a limited basis in last year, so seeing them talking to each other, being able to interact, and even going a step further, very excited that our students are able to participate in extracurriculars and able to participate in sports. It's huge. That is so necessary for so many of our kids. And just so another plug, at the high school next week is our homecoming week. So we have events going on Monday through Friday at the high school next week. And culminating Friday night, we will again be able to bring back the fireworks Friday night, which is been a nice community event. So, hope folks have a chance to come out and get a part in that. So, uh, please go home, principals. Get ready for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. Just a quick update on athletics. I think AJ spoke a little bit about homecoming, but um, I can just kind of go through an update from Aaron Moore, our athletic director. Football's off to a 2 0 start. Um, let's see. The fall cheer is a pleasure to watch because Coach Davis and the cheerleaders have put in a ton of time to their routines. You can tell. Field hockey was recently on the news as a team to watch. They're 1 and 2 so far, and they kept the game close, and they're always excited to watch. Boys and girls across countries off to an amazing start. Both teams took home the win for the first meet and haven't stopped producing successful meets since that time. Golf is 2 and 2. Girls soccer is 2 and 2. The boys soccer is 1, 2 and 1. The Noble Stanford co-op volleyball team is 3 and 1. Noble currently has more than a dozen uh, female students representing Noble. The volleyball team plays all of their home games at Stanford High School. Let's see. We've got some esports going through, um, and you know, so we have two coaches for that. And uh, then again, homecoming is next week, so we've got a lot of athletics happening that um, that week with the, the culminating football game, fall cheer against Massachusetts for next Friday at 6 p.m. And that is when the fireworks are going to happen at the halftime. So that's those are our updates. Girls varsity soccer team won nine nothing tonight. All right. Beat Westbrook. Oh. Football's had a bunch of wins and they're playing tomorrow night at Portland if anyone wants to come. Six, uh, six p.m. Seven thirty. Seven thirty. Next will be a staff presentation. Oh, wait a minute.
I can project for you all. Okay. Okay. So, thank you all. Um, first off, we just wanted to say thank you very much for the work you've been doing and continuing to do. Um, we also want to thank you for endorsing, endorsing the joint statement from the DOE last year that mandated schools work for inclusion for all students. And we also want to thank you for carving out time for our staff and our district to work uh, for PD uh, this time, this year, on inclusion. Um, we are going to be sharing two things before we get started. Um, some pieces that highlight why this diversity, equity, and inclusion work is so vital for our staff and for our students. We have a lot of responses from community members, alumni, former students, current students, um, but we had to choose a few to kind of that. These experiences, which are painful, we're going to share some painful experiences. We share them in order to These stories highlight discrimination that has been an ongoing struggle within this district, but not just within this district. This is not a, a strictly MSAD 60 struggle. This is a struggle that many of us across the nation are struggling with. That discrimination happens against students from various races, genders, sexualities, abilities, beliefs, financial backgrounds, name. We want to acknowledge that the work that has been done and is currently being done by the board, the administration, and the faculty of MSAD 60 is pushing us forward in the right direction. The ideas expressed in these Statements by the community members represents their own experiences wow. and how they impacted them. It is, however, <laughs> difficult to divulge intent. We do not highlight these stories to point blame, shame, or call anyone out for their actions. We share these stories because they are experiences of this community. In order for us to grow as a community, we need to know as a community. Often students and families will choose not to speak about experiences that they have for fear of reprisal. Elizabeth will begin by sharing those specific concerns from the past. Hello everyone. I'm a single mom on one income. I can't afford to relocate no matter how much I want my kids safe. How do you hide from racism? I can't put my kids on target even more than they are at Noble. If I tried to fight what's happened to them, that's what would happen. It would definitely be made worse for them. Putting these incidents on blast would only hurt my kids more. I can't do that to them. I taught them to always know, to educate ignorance, but to be quick enough to see and know they can't fix ignorance. I've taught them to persevere at all costs. I've taught them that although I can't get them out of school, this out of the school system to protect each other at all costs. I want to pause real quick just to acknowledge that some of the language that we're going to hear tonight will be triggering. I apologize for that language, but that language is the language that was used, and it is essential that we hear it for what it is. Respectfully, if you are concerned about someone hearing something that they might find offensive, it might be proper for them to step. So I'm John Hall, and I've been a part of this community forever, um, and I went to high school with a lot of people that were out here, um, and this is um, Chris Jones. Chris Jones, um, sorry about that. Sophie Lawson. I, I teach at Noble Middle School, um, and I've been teaching for about 18 years now. Um, so what I'm going to share with you is, is a story from a 2010 graduate. Um, as a black man at Noble High School, as long as you were good at sports, people were going to leave you alone. I still heard the racist, joking jibes constantly. Growing up, I had to learn to navigate the ignorance of my friends' families. You wanted to invite me over to dinner, but you have a Confederate flag hanging up in your garage. This, they just didn't have a clue. 
They think it's some cowboy, that it's some cowboy rebel symbol. Although, most of these parents went to Noble themselves. So issues of racism were clearly not covered. Overall, I felt like my white teachers at Noble, at the time all white, by the way, were afraid to really go there. Or maybe they didn't even possess the knowledge to teach such things. The time has come to step up. As a black man, I would never return to that community or allow one of my children to receive an education in that district, period. I apologize, my name is Chris Jones, special ed teacher here at Noble High School. This is from a mother from the community. A child grabbed his chair along with the other kids and placed it in a circle when another boy came up from behind him and pulled his chair back, causing my son to fall on the ground as he was about to sit. My son fell. The other child looked at him and said, Need to the floor. Not a word said by a student, or really any other adult in the group. Later that night, my son asked me what a Negro was. And why did kids have to be so mean? It took me about an hour to get him to explain what had really happened. I called the school, and the principal at the time said that it was wasn't really anything they could do because it was an after-school program, so there wasn't really any way for them to proceed forward, and perhaps it was some sort of misunderstanding. Um, I'm Sophie Larson, and I was just going to read out um, a statement from a graduate of 2020 just to highlight that some of our current or very recent students still um, feel the effects of this um, discrimination. Their statement goes like this. I'm biracial and my boyfriend finally got a truck and couldn't wait to put a Confederate flag sticker on it because that's what the cool rebel boys in Lebanon do. It took me forever to get him to understand that that just isn't okay. He loves a half black woman and had no clue that it represents complete hate and racism against black people. I had to walk past Confederate flags in the parking lot every damn day of high school. I had to sit in classes with kids with it on their shirts, belt buckles, phones, you name it. A kid I know got into huge trouble for writing a Nazi symbol, but these people get nothing. How's this okay? Um, so I'm gonna go back to 1989, my next one. Um, and this one really um, highlight, is highlighting um, issues around sexuality. Noble, like many schools, have always had these issues and have personally never seen progress from administration. From seventh grade through my freshman year, I had a single person focus on me and tell everyone I was gay. Imagine that in the 80s. It didn't stop until I confronted him finally at the end of ninth grade, when I beat him to a pulp after school in the hallway. I got suspended. He walked. This was all after I shared it with teachers and coaches. The repercussions for the next three years were awful. School sucked. Not sure how I made it out. Definitely has fed an adulthood of anxiety and depression. It's systemic, and I feel so awful for these kids. I don't know if there's some buried history that stops action, but change is needed. These kids of the 80s have kids now, and they've handed their hate down. So again, I want to recognize that the language we're going to hear is difficult. This is difficult for me to read. It has been difficult that I've, to read it since I first received it. My son was at the middle school in seventh grade when he first was confronted by a student who was well known for crossing racist ideas. One day after recess, the kids were coming in, and my son went to his locker. Another child, along with two of its friends, decided to try and surround my son while he was at his locker. The other kids started saying this to his friends, why would Noble let niggers into our school? Guess Noble was as stupid as this here nigger. My son stood up to defend himself and responded, the other kids pulled out a Swiss army knife and told his friends to hold my son so they could see if he bled red, or if he bled some disgusting black blood at his skin.
Um, again, this has difficult language in it. My son played football, and one of his teammates sent him a Snapchat message with the KKK burning crosses image, with a free text added at the bottom, your next nigger, on the image. He not only sent it to my son, but he also copied several other white kids. I told my son not to start a fight and asked if it was some type of joke in poor taste, maybe bad judgment. My son said he would find out the next day at school. My son has many friends and by the next morning they were ready to fight for him. He asked his friends to back away so he could talk to the kids. My son asked why he sent it and was it a bad joke. The boy replied, stating he deserved it and that was his only warning. That's when my son walked away. Luckily, another friend went to the office, and that's when all the details unfolded. I was called, and the Berwick police were called, and because I wanted to press charges, the Maine State Police were called. The school suspended the boy until after his court date. Thirty days later, the kid returned to Noble High School, where my son had to see him in the halls five days a week. I had to gather my son's friends to ask that they not seek retribution. And I'll present the final narrative from, from 2019. And just, uh, just again to reiterate that this is a selection of many that we received. I want to take this opportunity to sell, tell some parts of my story. Noble was always welcoming, but it's the certain individuals that you wouldn't really think would carry racist ideals that did the damage. When I was a junior, a group of girls decided to write on a chemistry desk, blankety blank is a stupid chink. One of my friends took a picture of it and let me know, and I immediately took it to the principal. Nothing was ever done. But it was disappointing to me that not even an assembly or some sort of presentation was held on racism, discrimination, stereotypes. I felt it was a problem that I wasn't the only, that I wasn't the only one experiencing. Being an Asian American in a predominantly white community was always difficult trying to find my identity and appreciate my background. Thank you for wanting individuals to reach out. It really does mean a lot for me to tell a caring faculty member. We have a brief slideshow. I want to thank you all um, for, for taking the time. And again, I just want to acknowledge the amount of pain that is expressed there um, and the difficulty to share those stories. It's never an easy thing. Maybe while uh, you get the slideshow going, yep. I'll just be clear that um, our collective is different than the Noble for All that was just seated. I believe the district is just seating a, um, a DEI committee, and we are separate from them. Just wanted to like clarify. There's some crossover in membership, but um, we're sort of an ad hoc formed group. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I can do it. Just watch the yep. yeah. We're about to see it all. We're about to sort of explain what our collective is. Yeah. Um, so, so it'll get out of the way so you can see it. We are we're, we're here to represent the Noble Anti Racism Collective. Uh, it's a group of educators from within the district. They came together in 2020 um, intentionally to try to improve our practice. Um, we were hearing a need from our staff, from our students, from our community, and we wanted to do what we could to get work started. Um, and that is reflected um, in a few ways. <laughs> our mission is to acknowledge that MSAD in order to aspire to ensure that our staff is trained in ways to engage with conversations that are challenging. We want to teach curriculum that is supportive of all diverse ideas. We want to actively promote anti-racist school policies that are working to support 
an inclusive model. Locate resources and collaborate with members of the community. We believe that our staff and students can be best supported through a proactive initiative rather than reactionary responses to additional incidents within our district. So our hope is that we can help to train each other and help each other. That's what we've been doing. We're trying to give each other some tips and tricks to kind of help ourselves move forward. So things that we've been doing so far, um, we've been meeting bi-monthly um, since last September. We meet after school hours um, on our own time. And uh, so this is all volunteer time that we're putting in. Um, we've helped to organize a high school training for the staff of the high school last October through Leaders for Just School. Um, we've been holding book clubs. We've read several books. We've got another book uh, scheduled to start up next, hopefully by the end of the month. It's been a busy start to the fall, so um, we're taking time to kind of kick that off. And we also partnered with the Noble Adult Education Program for, with the Equity Series with Sultana Khan Consulting. Um, that was last, I think, winter and spring. Um, so we kind of have structured ourselves in a way so that we have four specific things that we're kind of working on. Um, this is to kind of lighten the load in terms of how much time people are putting into this. So we're looking at um, what we're teaching, how we're engaging with our community, what we can do to improve our knowledge, and um, how we can promote policies that are going to be more um, restorative in their processes. So trying to work towards something that would be more of a restorative justice sort of model. Um, each of these pillars has subcommittees. We're, you know, we're reading, we're learning, we're doing research. Um, and we would definitely welcome and would love to have um, board members join us in the conversation. It would be fantastic. Chris, can I just... Yeah, jump in, please. Uh, jump in. There's about 40 of us that are part of this collective mm -hmm. um, that are staff members within the district. So this is... The four of us are representing the collective, but there is a large number of staff um, that feel very passionately um, and um, want to have this conversation with your community as well as with the yeah. um, This is our last slide. Oh. So things going forward, um, I think encouraging, like things like we are putting ourselves out there as a resource. I think that's the number one thing I want to make sure like is clear. Like we don't know everything. We don't. Like, we're doing our best to learn more um, as we encourage our students to. Um, but we've, we've done some work and we'd like to offer ourselves as a resource and a tool and a mechanism for the board um, as, as your employees. Um, we, we would really appreciate some support in encouraging teachers to have these hard conversations with students in class. And we definitely need training to do so. I think that that's, that's important. Um, actionable steps toward building relationships within the district between teachers, the board, and the community um, so we can have more productive dialogue. Um, conversate, continue the conversation uh, that started last year with the significance of the Confederate flag. Um, there was a couple of students' presentations last year that were very powerful. Um, we would love to continue to engage in educating ourselves and engaging in a meaningful, dis meaningful discussion on whether or not it's appropriate place for the school. We really, more than anything, want to thank you for carving out this time for us. We want to thank the district administration for carving out the time for us. Um, we really appreciate it a bunch of times. You're doing a lot right now. You're doing a whole lot right now, and we recognize the, the things that you're needing to juggle, so thank you for that. Um, and if there's a time and date where we could continue the conversation, we'd love to, love to chat. Anything else that I... Yeah, I think we just want to, um, I, I think we kind of said it, we would like to offer ourselves as a resource to collaborate with both with the district committee that is being seated, also with the board, and also with, you know, the district at large. So, you know, if we're ready and willing to help um, or sort of collaborate where possible. Just, I, I'd like to personally express my thanks to the board. Um, you know, you guys are, are um, serving our community uh, probably in one of the most trying times in most of our lives, um, and you're making really tough decisions. Um, and I really appreciate you doing that. And the, the last piece really is I sat there very quietly during public comment um, earlier. 
in civics, you, you learn not just about rights, but responsibilities. Um, and I, I heard a lot of people kind of demanding rights earlier, um, but I didn't hear a lot about the responsibility side of being a citizen of our nation. Um, and I think we really need to, to think about what are our responsibilities? Um, what is it that we are responsible for doing in our communities to make them the best possible place they can be? Um, and civility um, and those responsibilities are equally as important as the rights um, that were raised quite a bit earlier tonight. Um, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there, and that's my own personal piece, having nothing to do with these guys, but I just hope that we can really come together and be civil with each other. You know, like, you guys are my neighbors. Um, you know, I graduated with, with you, and uh, there's lots of people in this room that um, I spent a lot of time with. You know, I played football with people. I, um, I've been giving back to my community because I love this community. I, I really love it, and I want to see it become the best community that it can become. And right now, I don't feel like we're in a very good place. So I hope that we can do better um, as a community, as Lebanon, as Borough, as North Borough, as one large community. kept us up to date through, I guess, I don't know, the, the last year, whatever, I can't, I'm losing track of time, but, and I know that it's been a long time coming for you guys to present to us, um, so I just want to say thank you, and thank you for your patience, um, it's, you know, the, the board, and we've had a lot of turnover on the board, but we, we have been being kept, you know, sort of, posted on what your efforts were, or what you guys were doing, and so um, I just want to say, I, I think on behalf of the board that we appreciate your patience, because uh, I know it's, it's taken a while to get here, but um, thank you. Can I ask yeah. a question? Can we ask you guys a question? Um, I just want to say that... Yes, so this is the forum. Well, I just want to know what his, his stance is, and your stance, and your stance, and your stance on yeah. oh, the Confederate flag. What is your stance? So moving on. Thank you. 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 And this is one of her long remaining So we do need a motion to accept that resignation. I'll make a motion to accept the resignation. I'll second it. All those in favor? Are we going up now? Can we go up to the podium? Just, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I can't stand here while you're doing that. That's fine. Oh, it is. Good. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you're, you're, you're okay, right. so I just want to say hi. I'm Jocelyn. I'm from Lebanon, Maine. And I just want to start with the uh, 
critical race theory that we just started. I don't know if y'all have seen Facebook, how they show kids when they're little, little teenagers, toddlers, toddlers just around. They don't know the difference between color. They don't know the difference between what's, what's a color to them. They're friends. And now all of a sudden, you don't think they're putting this in their faces? It's not going to start a war? We already have enough of a war going on here. As for masks, let me tell you something. My 10-year-old who came up here and spoke, she tells me she gets one mask break if she's lucky. Everyone can't breathe up here. Everyone can't talk. Okay? This is what our kids are dealing with on a daily basis. Okay? I understand we're never going to see eye to eye. We're never going to see it. We're going to constantly fight you guys. You guys are going to fight us. But you know what? Your positions, they're there to a, for a point, and it's, the end is coming. And what we all need to do, guys, we need to replace every government, every school board, everything needs to be replaced. You want to know why? Because they don't care about our kids. If they, this, is, this is what people, millions of people died for. Our freedoms and our rights. And if you tell you something about rights, okay? Responsibilities, I've got Ross responsibilities. I've got plenty of those. You guys are more comfortable than masks, you keep your masks on. You're that comfortable being vaccinated? Great. You have no right to tell my kids that they have to be sitting in a claustrophobic mask all day. I do it because I work and I have to do it. But these poor kids, they can't breathe. And it's like it's nothing. Oh, oh, protect the masses. And now we're dealing with critical race theory? Good luck with that. These kids don't know the difference between black and white. And yeah, there probably have been problems, but they're all kids. They're going to have problems. They're going to say shit. You, have you seen half the shit that's on TikTok and all these other social media sites that these kids are watching? Not Who's going to hear about the N-word? Who's going to see kids freaking being racist? It's not going to stop if you're going to teach it. I mean, seriously, people. Teach them. Right I'm now. sorry. I'm done. I just wanted y'all to know how I felt. But we all need to replace that. That's all. Hello. My name is Lisa Powers, and I live in Burke. I have two students, um, two children who are students at the high school. <sighs> I want to start by saying that I support the board 100%. Schools make lots of decisions on our behalf, and like requiring like what we what the kids are taught in school, what they vaccines. School boards make decisions for us. That's why they're here to. That's their job, and they're doing what they are directed to do by the state and most normal. Uh, most most organizations that are out there, most scientific um, organizations. Do you really believe that the board wants to have mandatory masking? Do you think I like wearing them? Nobody likes wearing a mask. Nobody. I'm not passing out. I don't see anyone else here passing out. We can breathe. We are breathing. Um, do you think that they're really not? Our kids are not the priority. That there's some big Conspiracy is that there? There is. Okay, yeah. Big conspiracy theory. Big conspiracy. Well, if you, that's fine. If you, that's fine. Lisa, um, just to be clear, this meeting is for the board. It, it might be easier. Just the school is being generous with their time, and they've made their decision, and they will revisit it when it's appropriate. Um, if you want kids in school all year long then we have to follow these precautions. Otherwise, our kids won't be in, in class and we'll be back to remote again. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. Masks work. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, the scientific evidence is out there. They work. If you don't believe that, I, I, there's no help there. Um, are they 100%? Absolutely not. Are they all the same? No. There is something called, and you can do your research, viral load. If you, the more the part, more particles that come, the, the more likely you are to get a, a worse case of COVID. 
So if you're just, you know, if a little bit, and it's not going to be 100%, nothing is 100%, but masks do reduce the transmission and help keep our kids safe. Um, you can look it up. I don't, I don't, you know, they work. Um, vaccines also work. They're very effective in reducing the spirit of illness and cases of death. Um, it also helps reduce the variants that cause the mutations in the, in the virus to make new ones that are even worse. And so, yeah, the vaccine doesn't work for um, some of these newer variants as well as it did in the first one. And that's going to keep happening, and they're going to have to keep boosting. But if everyone just got vaccinated and followed the rules and wore their masks, then we are about three minutes. Yeah. Um, I, I just don't know. I, I and, and I guess the only other thing I can say is Confederate flags, really? Really? I mean, yeah, really. I'm sorry. Really? I can, I'm six feet away, so we're good. Uh, I was debating whether I was going to get up here and speak or not until that just happened. So you can speak for yourself whether you can breathe all day. I don't can't tell you how many times I have stepped out in the hallway to get a drink. A couple of times of pulling my mask on because guess what? I can't breathe. I almost was ready to pass out, which is why I'm probably not going to be 100 percent So on that note, speak for yourself. I am pro-choice. Um, I choose to keep my daughter home. We had that whole issue where the remote learn model from last year, not the school year model, just the remote learning model should be available. I'm not done with that. As far as the other stuff, the learning mask, I can bring it up, but I think somewhere on policy, the first policy, y'all are representing us. And then I can read it if you want, but it basically says you guys represent us yeah. and we have input. So you can, the other thing, you said you're going to talk about a survey. Don't just do, do you want mask all the time and not want mask all the time? Mm -hmm. How about some people might be okay with wearing a mask when you travel? But when sitting down, maybe not, you know? There, there are in-betweens, and then I gave another suggestion. Put that three feet that the CDC says. Let the people with no mask go in their group and the ones with masks. There are other options, and then I'd have to go back to what somebody else said. Is it really about the funding? Is it? Because we're picking and choosing, and it seems like we're just doing enough to get that funding. So that's what I get to say about that, pro-choice. Maybe at least two more people. One for the society. Right My name is Rachel Matuski. I'm from Lebanon. Me. My uh, oldest daughter is a senior at Noble. And I just want to say, I know that there's nothing I say that's going to change anybody's mind on either side of the debate as far as this mass thing. I do think that the board is trying to do their best to make the decisions for a large number of people. Their job is obviously to try to look into the best interests of the largest number of people versus necessarily focusing entirely on one individual person or their opinions. I do think it's unfortunate that we have so many parents who are choosing this as their hill to die on rather than using it as an opportunity to kind of use, you know, to teach your, your children about maybe following rules that sometimes they don't like. You know, personally, it is inconvenient for me to have to slow down or stop at a crosswalk when I'm running late to work. But I'm sure that anybody who's ever walked anywhere or had a child that crosses to go to school appreciates when cars stop and try not to hit them. Generally speaking, I'm going slow enough that they're probably not going to die, but they might, and it's the same thing with the masks. It's a small inconvenience. We're going to get through this, and I would love to see after this, we can get the pandemic hopefully under control, that the amount of energy that people are putting into this mask debate 
is put into something a little more positive in our schools because I don't think I've ever seen this many people involved in anything with the schools. So it's shocking to me. Um, so I just want to say that. I also want to say I think the fellow that came up and said something about responsibility is right. You know, just because I have the choice to get the vaccine, you know, chances are if I got COVID, I probably wouldn't get that sick. I got the vaccine, I didn't really have anything. Probably not going to get particularly ill if I get it. My family tends to be healthy. However, I do have a four-year-old who we don't have the choice to get their vaccine yet. You know, plenty of healthcare workers take care of patients who are immune compromised and also can't choose to get the vaccine or who might have uh, problems if they were to get it. So I would hope that all of you maybe try to get involved in your community in other ways to improve it, since there's so much energy about the mask things and the uh, Confederate flag for some reason like that came out of nowhere. I will say my whole family is from the South, stretching from Tennessee to North Carolina. I think 90% of them were probably in the Confederate War uh, on the Confederate side. And from the time I was little, I will tell you that it has never been looked at. The Confederate flag is anything other than a more divisive symbol. People understand that over time, if a symbol is used for something, if it's used for that enough, it's going to have a negative connotation, much like the Nazi swastika. It wasn't always a negative symbol. It once was a something to do with Hindu mythology. And over time, people took it on. They turned it into heat stuff. I'm sorry. You met your match. That's fine. <laughs> I want to speak on a different topic. I just want to say one thing. I don't care about flags. I only care about one flag, and it's over there. It's the American flag. And I didn't have enough time to point to that. You did realize that I did come up here for sports games on 9 11, and there was not one flag on this campus that was lowered to half staff on 9 11. Not one. And that was a presidential order standing every year. So that needs to be looked into. That's all I have to say. We just wanted to share the pool testing information, so we sent out that survey Saturday night, I mean, Monday, and we received 407 responses. So there were just two questions, one about where your student was attending, and then if you would be interested in having your student participate. So we had 53% of those respondents said no, and 46 said yes. And we have it broken down by school if you would like that information. So it's a voluntary participation. Uh, I know the survey was just to sort of yes. get a sense of where we were. But if it's a voluntary participation, do you need, is there a minimum like? We used to, it used to be 30% of a particular school, and they've loosened that up. So um, it, there is a, a minimum at this point in time. And how long are you going to be waiting for April? Is there a cloud date? Okay. 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 I think this is a reminder yeah. as well. And I don't think we need to push it out again, yeah. um, if, if that's helpful. I think um, this is about the same amount of responses that we got the last time that we get this out. Why was it sent out again when you didn't get the results you wanted in the first place? No, I, people wanted just a wider, uh, like, if there would be more response, and there isn't, so it's good. So basically, if, if we did do it, mm -hmm. if you would, well, participation is completely voluntary. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Right. So we can certainly explore that. I do know that school districts in this area are having a little bit of trouble getting it started, getting it up, working with the company, getting support for that. We can certainly move ahead if that's good. I mean, I would like to, I think it's one of the tools that can prevent kids from kind of start talking, and if it is completely voluntary participation, then I'm not sure. I don't I think if you chose not to participate then that's fine, but in case people do want to do that's how other people do so well. And it's a statement that in enough number um, to justify for some reason. Yeah. And it's going to be paid for the right? So we don't have to add anything to budget for that. 
correct. Do we need any else from the board to allow that, or? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I think what we will do, though, is talk with Amy to sort of look at what the process looks like so that we can share that information with you. Is it more before we go, like, this is just full of them? I just want you to see what it entails. Is it through the same agency throughout the state, or are they different? Agency it's okay. Mm -hmm. But the whole thing that's all the main thing that's saying current. I think there's a physical one. Is it successful? Yeah. So that's doing well. We have had to be very creative getting our students, athletes to events. We've had to take some of the vans. We've had to charter some buses to get um, students there because we just don't have the drivers. Um, we are looking at um, Wednesdays. This was our second Wednesday of late start, early release. And so we are just kind of tweaking the schedule a little bit to have students arriving at the elementary a little earlier so that they can get to the high school a little bit of time. Um, but we did a big push out last, last Friday for the drivers, and we do have some interest, some more names have come forward. So in addition to the two that we're working on um, getting in place, we've had some more inquiries. Where are we at with that with the opt-out process that they The opt-out? Yeah, they sent out a big push. Oh, yes, it's, it's been a slow going. With the, um, you, you have to remove your name from the app, and it's slow going, but they're getting them. I think they've had two or three hundred. You just confirming that they don't need the yeah, students to take a bus just to clean up the bus routes a little bit. Yeah, that's the goal. 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 Yeah, Massachusetts called up the National Guard to drive. Yeah. Because they were so, their driver, their driver shortages were so bad. Anyone like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.